To put it mildly, the internet is buzzing about the recent news that only three choices are going to matter in Dragon Age of the Veil Guard, but I'm here to tell you that the drama surrounding that news is fake. So if you haven't heard already, it was IGN that released the news that these three choices are the only choices that matter. Who the Inquisitor romanced, if you disbanded the Inquisition, and if you chose to stop Solus or try and save Solus. Now thinking about the overall scope of Dragon Age of the Veil Guard and the story that they're telling, these three choices do feel the most important. We know the Inquisition's coming back, and I think the biggest fear was that disbanding the Inquisition in Trespasser wasn't going to feel important because we're not following the Inquisition anymore. But Dragon Age of the Veil Guard recognises that if the Inquisition as a group is going to have any involvement in Dragon Age of the Veil Guard, then there are certain plot points that need to be addressed. And I'm not even going to get too far into the fact that the Trespasser DLC for Dragon Age Inquisition was a DLC. So if they were to keep the keep that people are complaining that they're getting rid of, then that will cause all kinds of issues for the people that haven't played the Trespasser DLC. Whilst it was part of a DLC, it is a pretty important decision if you're going to involve the Inquisition as a group in Dragon Age of the Veil Guard. But considering that this is one of three main choices, who the Inquisitor romanced seems like it will affect more than just the dialogue in my opinion. If you're going to pick this as one of only three choices to carry over, I think we can expect a companion other than Morrigan. There are multiple decisions that could have carried over as an alternative. Who was King or Queen of Ferelden at the time? Was Fenris alive in Dragon Age 2? And did the Inquisitor choose to seal an alliance with the Canari in Dragon Age Inquisition, sacrificing the charges? But no, they chose who the Inquisitor romanced, and we know that relationships and characters are important to Bioware in this entry. And of course, the third decision, that I think arguably is the most important, especially with how involved Solus is. Did we choose to vow to stop him or to save him. We know that Solus's relationship is important to the Veil Guard because of his interactions with Rook and if Solus will grow to trust Rook. Naturally, we can expect the Inquisitor to interact with Rook at some point in the story. And if the Inquisitor in this case vowed to stop Solus, there's an opportunity for some conflict there with Rook if Rook chooses to try and help Solus. Of course, we know that who the Inquisitor romanced is important for the people that romance Solus as well. Now, one thing I believe Bioware would never do is subjugate those players who chose not to romance Solus. Obviously this decision is important for the fact that if the Inquisitor did romance Solus, then we can expect some kind of interaction between the two of them. But why would Bioware then punish the people who chose to romance a different character by then not including cameos from the alternative romances in Dragon Age Inquisition? So now we've broken down why exactly these three choices are quite important to Dragon Age the Veil Guard. Now what's really got people up in arms is the fact that there are still important choices that aren't going to be addressed. And the fact that we are going to Tevinter and Antiva has got us raising questions about where certain companions are if they're alive, like Zevran. But if we think about it logically, the Dragon Age Veilguard situation is very similar to a Dragon Age 2 situation. Whilst Dragon Age 2 had less time to develop, behind the scenes Bioware's had a lot of trouble. And the fact that Veilguard exists at all, as its own self-contained story where choices do matter, is kind of a miracle. The last 10 years have been difficult, and with those 10 years have come a lot of expectations, especially for those that don't know what's been going on at Bioware behind the scenes over the last 10 years. But as we all know, Bioware needs this game to be a success, and the very fact that it has been 10 years since the last Dragon Age game came out, Bioware really has to consider new fans more so than old. To compare, it's a similar situation to Baldur's Gate 3. You can so easily play Baldur's Gate 3 without having played the previous entries. And we all know that Dragon Age has thrived on that idea that each game can stand alone on its own. Me personally, I entered at a very strange time. Dragon Age Inquisition had come out, but it was Dragon Age 2 that got me into Dragon Age, because I struggled with the combat in Dragon Age Origins. Eventually I realised just how much people had talked up Origins, and I really wanted to give that another go. And I think the Veil Guard is a terrific opportunity to expand the fan base on previous entries. And I truly believe that Dragon Age the Veil Guard is an incredible opportunity to expand the fan base and get new fans involved in playing previous entries. Some people argue that this new Dragon Age doesn't feel like Dragon Age, but the truth is, every Dragon Age game has gradually got more different. I mean, for starters, Dragon Age Inquisition was using the Frostbite engine and was using influences like Skyrim to develop an open world full of fetch quests. And yet that game still worked as an entry point for tons of Dragon Age fans who are still playing the games today. But the real reason why I believe that this news around the three choices being such a big deal is just fake and ridiculous it's because we've kind of known about this news for a while. In an interview with Bioware in an IGN post in June, 
we were already told that choices were going to work differently. And in July, we were told that the keep is being done with. Just like everyone, I am disappointed that we're not going to be able to utilize the keep. But to think about it practically, it is daunting for new players. And I think when Bioware worked on the keep, they hadn't anticipated the 10 year wait between Dragon Age Inquisition and Dragon Age The Veilguard. I think the keep still works as its own platform to track your choices across the first game, the second game, and Inquisition. And I think there's nothing to say that at least if Dragon Age of the Veilguard is successful, that maybe they will go back to it in future entries. We've already got a log of our choices in Dragon Age Origins, Dragon Age 2, and Dragon Age Inquisition. I don't think it would take too much effort for us to be able to upload or make those decisions that we chose in Dragon Age of the Veilguard. I think ultimately the real reason why this has upset people is because it's given people the belief that their choices don't matter in Dragon Age anymore. If you look at the comics, Bioware's established their own canon when necessary to tell their stories. I mean, for one thing, Alistair is the king of Ferelden, even though some players will have chosen Anora. But it's John Epler that said in interviews that there is no canon world state. They just need to establish some canon choices sometimes to tell the story they need to tell in certain comics. And in this respect, I can kind of understand it. And as, as much as we glorify the keep, I have to address the biggest issue with it. You can make all of these choices in the keep, but not many of them actually carry over. For instance, the ending of Dragon Age Awakening has literally no bearing on Dragon Age Inquisition. If you've seen previous videos, you'll know that I'm not just being some corporate shill for Bioware. I do genuinely believe that these three choices are really the only three choices that matter. It gets to a point where there are so many variations that are carrying over between these games that it just gets too complicated to consider all of the outcome, especially considering if a character like Alistair makes it to being a Grey Warden in Dragon Age Inquisition, that is if he's not king, and then considering whether he's trapped in the Fade or if he's not. At least we had some closure with characters like that in Dragon Age Inquisition, and I think that's worth considering as well. Again, I'm not trying to make excuses for Bioware, but I think we should all be well aware they have had a tough time of it lately. And while some would consider that the old Bioware is gone, maybe there's a new opportunity here for the new Bioware to thrive. Maybe not in the same way that old Bioware did, but it could still be good if we gave it a chance. What do you think? Leave it down in the comments below. Let's have a conversation about it. And if you've watched the video to the end, tell us who you romanced in Inquisition. If you want to hear more on our thoughts on Dragon Age of the Veilguard, click on the video, Coming up on screen now, I'm Craig from TK Games, thank you very much for watching.